Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2, everybody. Uh, as usual, we're with my co-partner in crime, Art Kirsch, and again today, the fabulous Dr. Liz Lister. Hello. How are you both? Hi. Good, good. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh. Oh, we're keeping uh, art away. I, actually, uh, I do. Uh, that was my method acting uh, to get <laughs> us into the topic of uh, nap naps and power naps. And uh, I just want to start off by saying that I like a good nap, uh, but mm. I find out the only way I can get a good nap is by actually getting under covers with the lights off and the TV off. Uh, but uh, I I like a good nap. What about you, John? Do you, are you a napper? I am a napper. I have inherited, Dr. Liz, I've inherited my father's ability to what he called catnap anywhere, mm -hmm. anytime. And I don't need the covers. I just need to put my head down and relax. For me, it's re relaxation techniques. But napping, Dr. Liz, napping is not always considered a good thing. I think it's fabulous. But some people look at it and go, oh, napping. Oh, can't stay awake. What's the problem with you? That's true. Luckily, the science and the culture is changing over to our way of looking at it, John. So that's good. That's good news. That's absolutely right. It used to be considered kind of like you're lazy or you're what's the matter with you. But now the science is showing that little short naps during the day, like your dad called it a cat nap. That's absolutely a great thing to call it. Power nap is also a great term that's used a lot. And a lot of scientific studies are showing that it's really helpful for performance and attention and brain function. Hmm. So uh, getting back to uh, uh, the ability to nap, uh, and John, I admire when I was in the, uh, in the Marines and we were on maneuvers, especially when we were going by truck someplace and they had us all in the back of this, what we call six by big truck. Uh, I could put my, head down on the tailgate, down a bumpy road, and within 30 seconds be fast asleep and not get up till I get up on the other side. But now I need now I need a, a, a cover over me. If I just lay down, even with a little blanket, it's not the same as getting into a bed. Has something changed with me, or is that a better way to get a, a good nap or a worse way? What say you, Dr. Liz? The way the studies have looked at it is a not a bumpy car ride. They've looked at it in a nice, quiet space, not necessarily 100% quiet and not necessarily, you know, the covers are not, I think that's very individual, so I, that's fine. However, a lot of workplaces now and, and schools also are starting to have what they call little nap rooms or like a little pod OK, we've seen that uh, that they definitely have that at some of the tech companies around here where I am in Silicon Valley, little pods where people can go for complete quiet. And it, there's also been good studies on the timing of how long should the nap be? This is a, an important and interesting question as well. Well, uh, what did what did they come up with? Yeah. What time? How long? OK, so first of all. Naps need to complement a good nighttime sleeping schedule. They shouldn't be to make up for poor or disrupted sleep. So it's very important to make sure you've got good quality sleep during the night. And then on top of that, it's been studied at great length, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And it turns out that 10 to 15 minutes, that's the answer. That seems to be the optimal amount of time because you don't want to get into too deep of sleep. You only want to go from stage one, which is that kind of a relaxation state that you can go into, maybe into stage two. That's it. You do not want to go, if you go down deeper into stage three or four, then that length of a nap, people feel groggy afterwards, takes them a long time to recover. So 10 to 15 minutes seems to be the sweet spot. Yeah, that, that's what works for me. Yeah. Right. And, and, and we do have a workplace rule, uh, uh, John and I, that uh, we can nap anytime, anywhere, 
uh, even during a meeting with one another. <laughs> and the way we sometimes pay attention to one another, it appears as if uh, uh, we're overdosing on napping during our meetings. Yeah, our business meetings are very unusual, I right. must say. <laughs> <laughs> it comes. It, it also, what's interesting is that it turns out that it's useful to use a timer. So mm. I'm a little bit like what you're describing, John. So my mom is a queen of cat napping. She has always taken a lunchtime nap. She doesn't need it completely quiet. And also my parents are from Argentina, my mom and my dad, they're both from Argentina. And napping is a national pastime. In Argentina, I grew when I was growing up and traveling down to Argentina, you couldn't buy anything between noon and about 4 p.m. Everything was closed. That's not the case now, as they try to get more with the global economy and they're then they're much busier. But a lot of cultures have naps as part of it. And turns out that's a healthy thing to do. So there's a lot of apps that can help with timing your nap. And I find that to be helpful for me personally. When I'm trying to take a 10 to 15 minute nap, I will feel more relaxed with the timer set because I know I won't sleep too long hmm. and end up late for getting back to work. Good, good point. I, I have a natural timer, I think. Hmm. I, I, if I nap, uh, it's probably tw 20 minutes tops and I'm up, whether I like it or not. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, yeah. Well, I suggest, um, with all this value of information, that we uh, take a break and go for a quick <laughs> nap and then uh, come back and talk about uh, this or another topic. What do you think? What do you think, yeah. John? I, I think that's great. And Dr. Liz, by the way, you could write a prescription for Art's napping. He <laughs> needs a teddy bear. I do. He needs a teddy bear. You know, the, the covers. Absolutely. The teddy bear. I'll do that's that. All that, would be, that yeah. would be nice. I will do that. Okay, but do you gentlemen want a surprise and interesting tip about naps? Sure. Oh, certainly. There's something that is that is being studied that's very interesting called a stimulant nap. Stimulant nap. And what that means is that it takes about 25 to 30 minutes for caffeine to get into the system. So this is a kind of napping. I have not tried this yet, but I, I've been meaning to, where you actually drink a cup of coffee and then take a nap. It won't disturb that 15 minutes then because it's not in your system yet. And people report that they feel really alert and really refreshed after that. So there you go. And there's even a cafe in Barcelona, Spain, that's called Nappuccino. And it's for the purpose. They have little sleep pods. So you drink your cappuccino or your little espresso, and then you have this little sleep pod. Isn't that great? I, I think that's on my bucket list. You know, you know what? You're you're up in the Bay Area, aren't you? Where they have these little uh, cafes that they have cats that you can go in and pet. But one of them could they could do the same thing and make it called cat nap. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, definitely. Doctor Liz's cat uh, nap cafe. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Well, I feel I don't know about you, Art, but I feel validated. My I, my napping is approved by Dr. Liz Lister. Right. Uh, so uh, when we nod off in front of one another, we'll know that it's under strict medical advice. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Dr. Liz. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bye bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.